Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to our Square Technology. I am your host, Ryan, and let's get rid of the SolidWorks. Monday. Gross. Enough said about that. We're going to move on now as we've finished the tire. We're going to go now to the hub sub-assembly. And we'll start out with a good old-fashioned lug nut. In this video, we'll get the basics of the lug nut modeled. We're not going to do the internal threading yet. And maybe not even at all, only because threading, actual cut threading, takes a lot of memory in SOLIDWORKS for some reason. And I don't want to really bog it down if I don't have to. We've actually already gone over this in some of my earlier Friday videos, all the way back in chapter two. There's a way to create a visual thread look without actually making threads, so we'll probably apply that. So, with that in mind, let's get started. All right, so as for this one, how do we want to do it? We'll make most of the profile off of one sketch, so front plane as usual for that. Go to our sketch tab and we're going to start with a center line. Draw up and out. And hmm, this will be the eye internal cavity height. Two. Yeah, we could make it the overall, I suppose. Two inch, <laughs> four inch lug nut in height. And we'll do something like this. I actually have to make it a little bit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> These are, of course, exaggerated in what we're doing here. And we'll fine tune. Remember, when you do a dimension based on this center line here, you can, in fact, drive past it to get the equivalent of double dimension, or what I consider the diameter. So, this will be 0 0.25. Quarter twenty. Mm, uh, I think it's their half inch. Again, I'll tune this later. And we'll escape once to go back to regular dimension. Definitely do not want that to be that big. Actually, you know what we'll do in this case too is we'll delete this dimension and this reference point here. Four inch diameter. Yeah, no, that would be like a point seven five. Hmm. Yeah, I think we could do that. Let's make that an even one inch for now. And then it's like a one point. Mm, yeah, something like that. And then we'll hit escape once to get out of double dimension. And we'll make this height. Yeah, why not? top of cavity. Now this we have more freedom with, so we'll make it a half inch. Alright, looks good. Looks like something. So then what we can do here, now again, this is a long lug nut intentionally. We're, we're kind of making this one of those like almost spiked lug nuts for humor. So... And there's a slight taper. We'll not do that in the drawing though. Draw it at 90s and we'll tune that later. So 
from here we can actually go into our features tab and choose the revolved boss space I have one center line so it already is going to by default choose that if you have more than one center line that's like that you're going to have to pick what your axis of revolution is I've shown this in a couple of different videos and it's in one of the Friday videos specifically I believe in chapter 2 that it's discussed when I believe making the offset shaft. As long as you have one center line, it's going to pick it and revolve it. So, with that, we want 360 degrees. Don't need to select the contours because it has exactly what I want because I went from the sketch. Now, granted, if you decided to choose to make this feature and you didn't select the sketch ahead of time, you're going to have to select axis of revolution, all that jazz to get it to a certain. So just looking at this lug nut, I think we're in good shape. We'll hit control S. Remember, save your part at the beginning, give it a name, file location, all that jazz. Save at the beginning and save often. That's my recommendation. We're gonna bring this isometric here. And then what we're going to do is observe. I'm actually going to turn the sketch back on for a moment. And let's bring it to the front plane for just a moment here and see what we can cut into. Let's go to our evaluate and measure 0.25, so 0.125 in. So we're going to hit the space bar and go to the top view. And because this select uh, the sketch is active here. We can go to sketch and we're going to choose a polygon. We're going to choose this top surface here. Just in case you're wondering, we're choosing this he surface here. Of course, we want the origin, center point, six. I'm not concerned whether it's circumscribed or inscribed. We can work with that. We're going to do the six faces. And we'll actually just snap it like such. Because what I want to do here, we need the reverse of this effect. So, then what we're going to do is draw another circle out like this, which now gives us a bunch of regions out here, which we want that. And I'll bring it straight up to the top view so you can see what's happening, right? So I want to cut the flat faces. So I need to create these regions here. And then from here we can do the features and then we can do extrude cut. And then the selected contours, we're going to do offset from surface on this one. Actually, no, we'll go... Yeah, let's do offset from surface. So we're going to choose our regions. And let's do the offset first face here and choose our regions like such. Click OK. And did I do an offset? Yeah, I did do an offset from surface. Do I want to do it that way? You know what? Let's just go up to surface. There we go. And we can also right click in the feature tree and hide that sketch. We no longer need that. We'll go isometric here, save it again. Okay, now let's uh, do some tune up here fillets and we're going to add a 0.65 radius to these edges here whoa sorry 0 0.065 th uh, 64th 16th I can't math today yeah there we go yeah 16 okay 16 its radius
center scroll wheel pressing it and holding it to rotate and manipulate the part in a free form like this. Just keep that in mind. Click OK. Control S. Do I want to do it? Yeah, let's actually reverse that. Now, I don't want to undo what I did. There's no reason to. So over here in the feature tree, there's this bar right here. This is what I call the rollback bar. Because you notice this little hand appears over it. You can roll back to a previous state but not eliminate the last feature you did and or sketch or whatever. And the reason you'd want to do this is because maybe you need to add something in prior to that feature to make something happen. Well, in this case, I want to add a draft because lug nuts do have a slight taper on their profile. So with that, what we can do now is we're going to be in the features tab. We're going to select this face here. We're going to choose draft and our direction of pull arrow is right there it's going up this way which means it's going to pull it this way because if this was a mold and, it, and say this longer part was A side and this conical part was B side the parting line would could technically be right at this edge here and so when it pulls apart it needs to have draft now I'm not telling you the very specifics and the high degree of accuracy because I'm not a mold maker but I have dealt with them and I do know that there's almost no situation where you can get away with no draft. You need to have some degree of draft and it depends on the material number of conditions. So I'm not going to advise you on the experts of that, but I can tell you that with injection molding, metal, plastics, something in between, you need to have draft so it pulls apart and doesn't destroy what they call the tool or the mold. So we're going to give this a one degree draft because of how tall it is and we can now select our faces here and what this is going to do by having the draft first is then the draft will then apply to those radius that we applied on the edges here. So click apply, click OK and there we go so now we had a draft now we can come back over here into the feature tree and roll it forward again and now the fillets are where they were and everything's good these follow that draft angle now something to keep in mind depending on what you're doing in a rollback state when you roll it back forward if certain conditions become you know entities sketches right if they lose say uh, relations then it'll freak out on you so keep in mind what you're doing in the rollback state uh, so that it doesn't in fact interfere with what you already had so, so let's say I added a fillet to those edges and then rolled it forward and it will freak out because then there's two fillets on the same edge with the same radius it's not gonna like that so just keep that in mind now the next thing we'll do here see and even further I actually we want probably the top part lug nuts usually have a rounded end to them which is cool it's fine so here's what we're going to do we're going to go all the way back to this point here actually we'll pull it forward to this cut extrude and this sketch here well, uh, reverse, go back, we're going to add a plane, an auxiliary plane off of this face, we're going to flip the offset, and let's make it half inch. Uh, yeah, that'll, again, we can tweak it later. Now we're going to roll it forward to just the cut extrude part. And then we're going to take sketch two and see over here, edit sketch plane. We're going to reassociate it with plane one. And why? Because I want the cut extrude to start further down to get this rounded part. So we can click OK there. Now what's going to happen is when I roll forward, draft one may have an issue. Well, I did not. That's nice. So what we actually need to do here is move draft one behind ex cut extrude one which is not going to let us do it but if 
we take this into consideration, let's see if, how it did with the draft. Nope. Let's delete the draft here first. So what we need to do first, actually let me undo that. Let's go back before this. So now we have this here. We're going to choose the front plane. We're going to make a sketch on the front plane. And we're going to do something like center line down to this plane, fully defined. We're going to come out this down. And now we're going to do a regional cut. I want an arc for this. And let's zoom it in. And we can make this tangent to that, which will fully define it, which will then allow us to come over here and do a vault cut. And I'm going to have to select the contour here. Intersects this. Oh, this tangent. Because the draft isn't in play yet. Well, that's an infinite edge. Let's just give it a radius of point eight seven five. See if that is not too sharp. Let's do this. Shouldn't be creating a thin feature. But in case it is, Coincident like such. The sketch is open. I do not see where it is open. All of these are connected. Let's bring it normal to for a moment here and have a look. Let's just remove everything for a minute. If I go from the center to here and down and over. Ah, woe is me, silly me. So, there's not enough coffee in the day, it seems, which is okay. Don't worry, I'm only human, I think. I hope. 
because again I want a curved cut. And I guess what I had there was an infinite point which creates self intersection, so that's fine. So let's make this here point twenty five. This radius point eight seven five. There we go. This shouldn't have any issues now. There we go. Now that we have that, now we have some kind of bullet. Now we can pull this back into place. Check that. I think I went in. Here's what we'll do at this point, right? So we're going to show this. And we got plane one. So we're going to take plane one, create a sketch, convert the entities, choose sketch two in its entirety. Then from here, we can go to the features and we can do an extruded cut. Choose these regions here. Selecting through the part. But if you're not sure, make sure they're purple. And then we're going to change and we're going to go blind. Actually, we can do up to surface on this. There we go, and then we're going to hide sketch 2. So there's a lot of edits we just made, and we can hide plane 1 now as well within that. So now the draft, now it freaked out, because now it's like, hey, there's faces or something I didn't have selected before. What would you do on me? Missing face 8. Okay, let's remove that missing face. We're going to bring it isometric here. And actually, let's bring it to your front face. And we can see the taper slightly. And then we can pull this back into that state. And there we go. Now it's kind of more like a lug nut. Still a little bit different than what some of the other ones are, which is more of a just cylindrical, conical rather than dome. But I don't like it. And finally, down here, we're going to add a. Yeah, 0 0.03125, 30 second, all around here and here. Ooh, it's not liking that. It's too much. That's okay. In that case, I'm going to go back to my master sketch. And we're going to make this 1.25, just a little bit bigger. That way, I can take the second fillet and add it here. And then finally, we'll do another fillet at 0 0.0625 here. Control S, and let's see, material because we're expensive. Titanium. Spacebar brings that normal to, control S, and that is the beginning of an extraordinarily long lug nut. So this uh, trailer is gonna be pretty ballin' <laughs> as far as a lug nut's concerned. But I've seen spiked lug nuts out there that are pretty long. Those are impressive, I must say. So, that is uh, part one of the lug nut. We'll come back to part two probably later. We'll get started with the hub next Wednesday and get some you know rough dimensions made out based on the wheel. And then we'll come back, tune this up with thread, and probably add, again, um, 
simulated threads, if you will, to both the lug nut and the bolts of the hub. Hope you learned something. Hope you learned the mistakes you can make when messing around with rollbacks <laughs> and how to correct them. The situation's always gonna vary. So remember your relations for each sketch and feature, etc. And until next time, take care.